Musa Zangpola, today I'm meeting a very special guest. She is Kani Vignaraja, who is UN's Assistant Secretary General, Assistant Administrator, and she's also the Regional Director Bureau for Asia and the Pacific of UNDP. Let's go and meet her today. Zongpala. How are you? So nice to meet you. You too. Finally. You too. How are you? Very good. How is Bhutan treating you? Oh, so well. Right. Always. So I wanted to interview you regarding yes. the electric vehicle. Yes. But I thought it would be nicer to actually take a spin around the town. I think that's in a great idea. In electric car. I'm so all yours. we have one car waiting for you. Yes. Do you mind showing me? Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Let's go. Oh, okay. This is our driver. Look. How are you? So, yes. Is the owner of this electric oh, okay. car? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, how was your trip so far in Bhutan? You know, I've come back every ten years, and every ten years, it is amazing what I see. Right. The changes. I mean, some some can be challenging. Right. You know, but overall, to see a country uh, moving forward. Right. Uh, and I think now, I mean, look at where we are. We are in an EV vehicle. Exactly. Uh, the first time I came to Bhutan, right. Thimpu had just one road. Mm -hmm. So that was 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Right. Now I'm riding along in Thimpu in an EV vehicle. Right. Can you believe this? I know. It's, it's <laughs> such a drastic change, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's wonderful, right? Now. It is absolutely. Right. So yeah. back then, when you visited Bhutan, there, was n there wasn't any single ve EV vehicle at all. How does it feel to see EV vehicle in Bhutan? I think it's abs I, I hope Bhutan can show the world right. that this is possible. Right. You know, it is not an easy transition. Right. The transport sector to change it is not easy. Exactly. But uh, I think this is going to be a demonstration right. uh, to the world. So yes. I'm so proud to be seeing and being in an EV vehicle. Right. Not just talking about it. Bless, bless. Um, so yes, you're very right. I think this is the right path. Right. So for your record in Bhutan, currently we have about 150 EV vehicles, including this one. Yeah. And we also have several uh, EV charging stations. So do you think, because we, now the world is talking so much about embracing EV vehicles and low emission vehicles right now. Do you think EV vehicle is the future? I definitely think so. I think uh, we have to break this habit of fossil fuel dependency. Right, right. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's bad for our economy, it's bad for our health, it's mm -hmm. bad for nature. Right. So I can't see uh, that there is a way out for the transport sector Less. other than going into uh, right. renewables right so to me the electric vehicle is and not just cars uh, public transport right. as well right right this is essential right because in most countries yes. uh, it's people take public transport agreed, right agreed. so uh, trains uh, buses yes. uh, absolutely critical right. right yeah right it is wow. the way of the future agreed talking of electric vehicle like in the world we are actually encouraged to drive this actually to contribute towards climatic action, right? La? So, what do you think about climate change? Oh my, well, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, for, it's a, a, right. for a country like Bhutan, right. that is not causing mm -hmm. the problem, right? La? but it is feeling the negative right. effects, right. Right? right? And so, there is an injustice there. Um, however, what I find is such a amazing attitude among the leadership, young people I've talked to. Yes. They see themselves not only as protecting Bhutan, but protecting the world. Right. And so that sense of being a global citizen, oh. while you can also be a local right. citizen, right. is powerful. You don't find it all over the world. Agreed. Agreed. And one should never take it for granted. This right. is why finding space for young people to be more in control of um, uh, being a climate activists. Right right? right, 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 right. And choosing paths that maybe their parents and grandparents didn't have the opportunity to right, choose. Right, right, right. 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 So the greener opportunities, right. the greener jobs. Yes. Um, I think um, mm -hmm. this generation is going to change things. 
um, and not destroy right. like uh, like we did in the past. But I think now we really are left with no choice but to really walk the talk. Uh, yeah. Like I, as a travel blogger, within my capacity, I really try to bring in stories, what's like actually happening happening at the mountains, and I tell the stories to people. And now, uh, also for your information, I reference Bhutanese young people. They are very outspoken they are very confident in what they say and what they feel so like in general people are now really taking charge of our planet so that that's good news so talking of which uh, i know i'm super jealous jealous that you have been to lunana i mean i'm an avid trekker but i have not been to lunana but you just flew there what was the first thing that came in your mind or that struck your mind the moment you saw that lake you know, it's the whole landscape. Yes. I mean, it is just um, breathtaking. Yes. Uh, and yet you know that behind this, um, uh, it is a beauty that uh, is hard to explain. Yes. At the same time, right behind that is fragility. And this sense of being uh, completely in awe yes. of the, the splendor, yes. and at the same time being fearful of what is going on, right. um, because we're seeing, you know, you could see the tree lines have receded, right? Um, the glaciers, I, my goodness, I mean, I had the wonderful opportunity to speak, uh, to be with uh, the uh, uh, glacier specialist, right, right, uh, right, Karma, right. Dr. Right. Karma was with us, beautiful, uh, his ability to see the historical right. um, the questions, the right. change. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's how much has gotten lost just right. in the last 10 years is unbelievable, no? Right, right. Then you see these lakes. So the first thing you think is, oh, what a beautiful lake. Right, right. right. Then you realize it's the melting glaciers uh -huh. that are causing these lakes. Agreed, right. Agreed. And then you, I mean, the destruction in 94. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so UNDP is doing a lot to mitigate that, That's you know? I mean, Trying to dig these lakes deeper, no? Exactly, exactly. And but Sana actually succeeded. It has succeeded. It is amazing feat. Right. Uh, 300 people out there That's at that altitude mm -hmm. with shovels. Exactly. Right, because you can't take machines up there. Um, but at the same time, when you ask the people of Lunana, That's what is their immediate issue? Right, right. They always say, we need to have light. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, solar yes. is going to be a life-changing. Oh, this is very inspiring. Even when I did uh, one video about stories from the mountain, I met this Highlander, a very old lady. The only thing she wanted, I just asked her, if given the choice, what do you need? She was like, the solar light. Because she said, so many wild animals are coming to her farm attacking yachts. So yes. solar light would actually curb her problem. Yes. So that's very relatable. So having heard uh, what people are in need of, especially from the mountains, uh, do you already have that second step in mind from UNDP's initiative where, oh, maybe we should do this. I'm aware that UNDP has supported so many great solar powers in country, but do you also have some other things in your mind, love? Well, this is going, it's more difficult, right? That's because it's off-grid. Agreed. Um, but we are discussing, we'll discuss with partners also, yes. um, how to support some of these more remote communities. Yes, that's it. And uh, you know the, this beautiful uh, movie, A Yak in the Classroom? Oh, yes. Lovely, <laughs> lovely that's, and, that's... and just motivated. But I hope people watching that don't just watch it as a lovely artistic movie, which it is. Agreed, agreed. But that they also think through uh, what it means for communities living in the highlands right. um, with very little and how the world has to come together right. to support communities like Lunana. Right. So I think we're going to be seeing how on the energy transition issue, right. on human development issues, yes. Yes. Uh, how to improve uh, livelihoods, yes. right? Yes. Um, all of these things together. Yes. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, it's about uh, giving young people a sense that there's a future Mm -hmm. in their country and hope too and hope and if they do go out yes. 
that they will cherish coming back. Right. They will have reason to Absolutely. Come back. Wow. That, that's very inspiring. I, I think this is the highlight of this talk where you would really like to see young people come back to country because they have reason to come back. Exactly. Right? So I really don't want to bog you down with so many uh, difficult official questions. So this is uh, my personal uh, question that I've been longing to ask you. Okay. Uh, you're a global leader. And let me remind you, many of the men around the world actually admire you. <laughs> Yesterday, <laughs> no, 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 I met some foreigners and I told them I'm having an interview with Khan. They were like, oh my God, is she in country? So women admire you for your leadership, for your dynamism. And if I ask you to give an advice to any woman like me, or a girl, young girl with big dreams, what would that be? Any advice <laughs> to conquer the world just like you? <laughs> You know, I, I don't think I've conquered the world. I think I've always had amazing um, people to look up to Bless. and learn from. And sometimes you find them in the most unusual places, right? So I think when uh, we should always be watching, and I've had amazing women mentors, Bless. Um, and I think we should give back. So I find... Um, if I can help other women Bless to also find their way, just be a sounding board, Bless you know, that's one. The second is to have um, a quiet confidence. Sometimes the world is uh, in, a, in some places, uh, don't give uh, a chance to women to feel they can be fully in control of their Bless choices. Bless. And we can. So I think that is another important thing. Yes. And then to be a role model. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean to, you have to be at the top of your profession. Okay. It means you have to have empathy. You have to be kind, yes. right? You have to, I mean, for me, if I think about it, um, I am, um, my, um, my support system comes from family. Yes. My, I've got these two amazing daughters an amazing husband, yes. um, uh, fa uh, parents who, who told me I can be anything I want to be. Wow, right. Uh, and never judged. Yes. Yes. And I think if I can do that in turn, yes. and each of us can do that for each other, uh, I think then the rest comes. Wow, that's very humbling and very inspiring. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time. No, not at all advice i know it has been a really hectic time for you in bhutan you have been visiting so many places meeting so many people that itself shows that you really want to connect to bhutan through so many means thank you so much not once at again all. for your time and exclusively for this session it means no, it's a, a world to me la, and i wish you luck thank uh, you and to you and i look forward and to, to you. you yes keep inspiring with thank your blogs you.